Luminary writer-director Paul Schrader's new film, Master Gardener, is an allegory about redemption and offers to the audience if love is the ultimate rehabilitator. Now, I question this narrative. I love this film, first of all. This is one of my favorite films not because it's perfect. It is not absent of major issues. I love the narrative where it's going and where the possibility of where it could go and the concept, but I have issues with it. And one of the main issues is who, who the filmmaker is. I think that Schrader may be out of his depth as far as where a narrative, where a story like this could have gone. In the right hands, honestly. So this film centers around Joe Edgerton's character who plays Narvel Raw. Now Narvel means the time of mankind. So the narrative becomes that this person is new, this person is redeemable but then it goes on to present the characteristics the inherent bias that this particular character has don't get me wrong this film is a stunning portrait of a seemingly reformed bigot who falls in love with a young biracial drug addicted groundskeeper he's been charged with mentoring there are so many directions that a film that a concept like this could go in where he takes it is okay but the problem i have with schrader's direction is that this character narvel raw gets out of these stakes too easily because if Schrader stayed in the uncomfortable positions, it would be a, too uncomfortable for him. Keep in mind that Schrader is a wealthy, well-connected, elder, luminary, so he's well-positioned, white man in Hollywood if this if this were based if this story were based in any truth a lot of the situations wouldn't be so easy but for him he's got to get to the answer quicker because it might happen quicker for him than it would for somebody like me here's the thing I think Joel Edgerton is perfectly cast. I couldn't see another actor performing in this role at the level he brings. He brings some depth to it, even though the stakes are easily resolved. I think he's perfect. I do not think Quintessa Swindle is perfectly cast. I think this should have been a black actress who isn't biracial because how uncomfortable would it have been for the audience we need to shift in our seats for something like and for situations like this how uncomfortable would it have been for for Joe Edgerton's character had this been somebody older Quintessa they're in their 20s when Tessa's young and Joe Edgerton is in his 40s, right? That's a pointed decision that the filmmaker made. So what if this were someone else like Gabrielle Union or another actress in this role? How uncomfortable would, would the stakes change? Would the situations change? How difficult would it have been for them to connect? What will 
the real world challenges had been if an actress were cast in this role who wasn't biracial. Joe Edgerton is very convincing as Narva Roth, a former Klansman who escapes justice because he helps authorities capture his Grand Wizard who has been authorizing the lynching of Black people. The reason why I use air quotes is because in the film, as this master gardener, or rather this horticulturalist, he is charged with overseeing this garden, which I'll get into, this garden and these groundskeepers who happen to be minorities. So, so optically, he looks like an overseer on a plantation. The grounds, Sigourney Weaver owns these grounds. And he, who escaped justice, has to do no jail time. He is in protective custody. Has so much privilege after all of the crimes he has committed that he is charged with, he is basically a master. And that's a, that is a distinct point in this film. Sigourney Weaver plays Norma Haverhill. Now she is the owner of this plantation and takes advantage of Narvel because he has nowhere to run. He's hiding on her estate really from these, uh, white supremacists who were after him because he did turn over their grand wizard so she takes advantage of him sexually mostly and fetishizes his tattoos she enjoys the fact that he is a white supremacist i love how a slow burn a slow build it is when the character of Navro Raw is revealed. There is this jump scare, really, of Navro removing his shirt and the audience seeing his tattoos. He is painted with, you know, all of these neo Nazi white power, white supremacy tats all over his back. What's beautiful about this didactic film is how Schrader filmed it. I love the set design, this juxtaposition, how famish the grounds are. The characters are saying it's beautiful, but as the audience, we see the drought. And the lighting that the cinematographer uses, how lit it is. Now, of course, we know that to grow, you need light. The people, not all of the people, but the main, ca the principal cast have dimmed lights. Narvro is trying to illuminate by, by teaching his apprentices about seeds and soil and irrigating love instead of hate. He's teaching these lessons, trying to find light though he is still painted in, you know, these proud boy white supremacy tattoos. He is trying to find some light. And I like that, how lit it is. I wonder how this film would have come across if it weren't as lit because, again, it's a drought. There are no flowers. Nothing's really blooming on this plantation. Um, and again, he's charged with teaching these minorities, which <laughs> really, that's insane. And anyway, at any rate, no flowers sprout up for most of the film. There's a section of the film where these beautiful buds sprout, not on, uh, not on Haverhill's land, 
but on a road trip that Narvel and Maya, played by Contessa, on a road trip that they take, they see these flowers bloom after they have connected in a way that seems like, or I think what the, the narrative is that when this black per, this black woman and white supremacist man connect, then somehow the world, the world blooms. And this is supposed to lead us to believe that they are somehow in love. That it so much is, there's so much subtext in this film that we have to come to the conclusion, we the audience, the viewer has to come to the conclusion on our own. And I think based on our own experiences, and a lot of that is Schrader's strong hand as the filmmaker of the project. And the allegory becomes, who's redeemable? Is Narvo redeemable? He still has these tendencies, which we see in the continuation of the film. He still has these tendencies. So is he healed? Has he been redeemed? Is he redeemable? That is the continuous question posed in this film. Narvo is tealing this land. He is tealing this land. He is irrigating these people, these minorities. Are the seeds in the right hands? And I question, are the seeds of this film in the right hands with Paul Schrader? I just question what this project, what it would have resonated with me more had a Black filmmaker wrote it and or produced it and directed it what how it would have been lit if a black non-biracial actress were cast as the love interest how it would have been lit what if if a director like melina masukas or barry jenkins or or Ava DuVernay or Spike Lee, if they would have filmed this project, if the narrative would have changed, if we would have, if we would have stayed longer in the uncomfortable places, would, what, how would it look with, how would the redemption arc would have worked out for Navro? if a black director, if a black filmmaker were charged with this project, I wonder what it would have looked like. I, it might've resonated with me more. This again is one of my favorite films of the year, not because it's absent of any major issues. I like what director Paul Schrader did. I just wonder if it would have been bigger and better and, uh, more meaningful and what the ending might have been because this ending it gets to a place of healing that seems unrealistic in the real world in the real world i i get the narrative he is presenting to the viewer but it felt disconnected in a way because it was filmed by someone in Paul Schrader's position, the way he is positioned in the world. I think he is disconnected in how this would feel in the real world, basically. But at any rate, this is 100% worth seeing. Master Gardener, is a fantastic film. One of my favorites of 2023. I believe it's it's in limited release right now, so it might be difficult to see in the theater, but the moment it is released digitally, the moment it is streamed, I petition you to watch it. And I'd love to know how you feel about what, how, how do you gravitate towards this project? It's a slow burn. It does take 
time but there's so much to chew on in this film and I'd love to know your thoughts and I want to see it again and see if what I'm feeling changes so I, I will likely see this again and maybe I'll revisit this with uh, more thoughts um, but at any rate Master Gardener is in limited release now. If it is playing in a theater near you, give it a chance.